Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Greetings on this Pentecost Sunday. Uh, in honor of Mental Health Awareness Month, uh, I wanted to kind of put my two cents in. And, and frankly, mental health awareness really shouldn't be a month. It shouldn't be a day, it shouldn't be a year. It, it shouldn't be a century, uh, any day uh, for folks that struggle with mental health. It, it's You don't need a month to put the, uh, the shine the light on, on mental health. Uh, for those who deal with mental health issues, myself included, although not nearly as much now as I have in the past. And for those of you who've followed me, for those of you who, uh, you know, read my article entitled Out of the Storm, I go uh, somewhat in depth about my struggles, my demons uh, battling a massive, massive depression. Uh, and, and the article, I tried to go back and trace my steps to see where this may have manifested. Uh, I looked at a couple of different situations to see what brought this thing almost to to the end of my life uh, without God stepping in and, and tapping me on the shoulder and said, telling me that he has other plans for me. I could have very well have been a statistic. I could have been a faint memory in a lot of people's minds. And I don't think it would have been a positive feel uh, had I gone and just pulled the trigger and ended my life in April of 2015. God had other plans. Uh, unbeknownst to me, he viewed me more highly than I viewed myself. So not everyone is going to have that situation of having God intervene on your behalf. And for those who haven't, for those that God said, I'm just gonna let this happen, uh, I, I'm praying for your souls. My situation was a little bit different because God obviously thought more of me than I could ever imagine. And, and I'm grateful. And I do believe that I am a better man. I am a better father. I'm a better brother. I'm a better nephew, cousin, friend, who, whatever you deem that I am to you uh, in particular. I hope and I pray and my faith tells me that I'm going to be better each and every day. Every day, I mean, we struggle. And because of the situation that we have found ourselves in as a nation, battling a raging pandemic, battling uh, race and cultural wars, battling violence, battling racism and bigotry, and just all outright hatred, uh, we have found ourselves as a country and as a, probably as a world in a very, very tough situation. So that probably exacerbates mental health issues even more. For those of you who are struggling, you have to reach out. You simply do. I mean, and I'm saying that now uh, when I personally did not reach out, I simply felt that my career was at stake. You know, pity me, I thought my career, you know, was a little bit more important than my life. So shame on me but I do know better now. Yes, I hit it and I hit it masterfully. Uh, you know, when I was working in, in Colorado and I was a director of corporate security, I was shining. My career had reached the pinnacle, uh, stepping in and, and creating a corporate security program for a cannabis company. I was shining professionally, but personally, when I went home at night, after working crazy long hours to kind of mask my, my hurt and my depression, I realized that I was really struggling. I was being interviewed by the New York Times and Security Magazine and, you know, my program won all these different corporate security awards. That should have been the pinnacle of my career and that should have been the most fun I've ever had in my life, but it wasn't because I struggled and I just chose not to let anyone know that I was struggling. And it wasn't, I did not even acknowledge my situation until I was sober, until God came to me one morning at 3 a.m. 
and said, you need to start writing. You need to write this. And I asked why, and I continue to ask why. And God, in his infinite wisdom and patience with me, because I ask a whole lot of questions of God. And he is so patient and so loving of me. And he eventually answers, even though he may not give me the answer when I'm asking him at that moment. He eventually gives me an answer. And I realize now that I am in a much better place and I'm in a position slowly but surely to help others because folks can look at my situation and say, hey, you know, if uh, Cy got through it, maybe I can. In 2018, when I was flying back to Cy's graduation, I got to Kennedy. I was at JFK Airport. My daughter, Samaria, texted me and said Anthony Bourdain had passed away. I was a huge fan of Anthony Bourdain, Red Kitchen Confidential, all of his programs on the Travel Channel, Parts Unknown on CNN. I don't know why I identified with him because I'm not a chef by any stretch of the imagination, but I am a world traveler. So there was some sort of identification that I had with Anthony Bourdain. And then when I found out he died, I asked my daughter, well, what was it? And I was crushed. I didn't even know this man, but I felt so disappointed. And yet in the back of my mind, I knew that I had already been there in 2015. And here we were three years later. And I was asking, I asked God, I was like, God, why him and why not me? And I asked this one evening and it was a quiet answer. And God's reply was, I chose you for a mission. And I still, friends, it, it, a lot of these things, it, it just doesn't resonate with me until I'm able to take a step back and pray on it and meditate as best I can and try to figure out this path of enlightenment that I am on right now. And it is righteous, it is joyous, but still it's not that far in my rear view mirror that I don't understand mental health and how it affects people. I am on this path right now. I am a volunteer chaplain. I am trying my best to uh, keep at my seminary studies, although it's difficult for funding and different reasons but yet I am plugging away and I appreciate each and every one of you who are supporting my channel. This channel is the little engine that could. I don't know how many passengers are on board this train, but I know this train is moving in a righteous direction. For those of you out there who are quietly battling mental health issues, I'm praying for you, get help, do the best you can as far as reaching out again and I continue and I will harp on this but do not suffer in silence because I did and now I'm in a position to say to you don't be like me <laughs> reach out to me you can reach out to me quietly and we can start to get on that path uh, of getting well again and again, this my mental health situation isn't that far in my rear view mirror. And I frankly, I don't want it to get too far away. I want it to be nearby so it keeps me on edge. It keeps me staying on the righteous path that God has me on. In closing, I'd like to read. I read the scripture uh, this morning, and I think it's just so indicative of life. This is from the book of John, and this is uh, chapter 15 verses 14 through 17. And Jesus said to his disciples, you are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. We have to simply start loving each other. And if you don't love yourself, you are incapable of loving anybody else. 
Grant, I will tell you, this comes from experience. This comes from an individual who did not love himself, therefore was incapable of loving anyone else. This individual was not true to himself, so therefore he was not true to anyone else. Love one another, friends, but love yourself. God bless you wherever you are at. I wish all the blessings, all the fruits that God can provide for you. I hope he provides for you. God bless. Amen.